Hi everyone, it's Bethany, welcome back. In this video, we have another new tool for our fun little series of New Tool Tuesday. So, I've had this in my craft room for probably over a month now, and it's time to open up the box. I have saved opening it up for you so that we can just open it up together, see what's inside, and learn this new tool together. So this is the We Are Memory Keepers Cinch Machine, and it's a really neat machine that can bind books which is so fun. You can use this for a variety of fun projects. And I thought we could open it up and do a project today. So on the box, it's a beautiful, beautiful branded box, but we have a little picture of the actual machine on the back with some of its features right here. And then on this side, it says that this is as easy as one, two, three, essentially. So first we're gonna punch the holes, thread the sheets inside of the little binding, and then we're going to cinch the wire shut to make the binding. So this will be pretty easy, I would think, but let's go ahead and learn together. So I'm gonna go ahead and just open this box up. And let's see what's inside. Okay, so first we have some reading material and it's upside down but here is the actual machine how cute is this and I think they have a variety of, of styles in terms of color but if you know me the pink called my name and I quickly added this to cart isn't this pretty so neat. Okay, so that was all that was in the box. We have some reading material and the actual machine itself. Okay, so let's just open up this little guide and see what we have here. Okay, so in this little guide on the first page, it is going to show us how we're going to punch our little holes to create our books. And this is going to depend on the size of book that we want to create. So there are varieties of, of sizes you can create. That's the top number here. And then they have the coordinating peg on the bottom. So we'll, I am assuming learn more about that as we continue. The first thing it says that we're going to do is release this little hook. This is the storage hook and then it's going to allow the handle to come up and down. And look at the pretty little logo on the actual handle, I love that. Okay, so when down, we can place the little hook there and that way it's easy to store. And the handle is nice and snug in there, easy to put away. Okay, so, but in order for us to use it, we're going to remove that hook, release the handle, and there we go. Okay, so it says before we start any projects that we should grab a piece of just scrap paper and we're going to just practice. But also what we're going to do is make sure that we actually do a couple presses and punches to remove any grease that is on the actual press. So this is going to help remove any of the grease and as you can see, let me try to do that with a piece of paper behind it. Can you see that has a little bit of grease on there? You can see kind of that black outline. So we are just going to repetitively, repetitively, oh, and it just glides down so nicely. I'm just going to continue pressing down and punching these until I don't see any additional grease. And I still have some, so what I'll do is I'll just grab some scissors. That way we only use one piece of paper to do this. We'll just trim these off and keep going. Okay, and this is why it's so important to read the directions because I would just want to start on my project right away. I'm still seeing grease on there. And we don't want to ruin our project and our nice paper with having with having some greasy little openings. Oh my gosh, that glides so nice. And it is getting better. I think I will continue doing it. Let's see, I've done it eight times so far. Let's go ahead and do another series and see, it's definitely getting better. There we go. Okay, I think we have 
a little bit more to go, but we are definitely making progress on removing that grease. And I just used every little last piece. And there's still a tad left on there, but I think for my project, I think that's going to be, I think that's gonna be okay. Okay, so now we have cleaned our little punches and removed the grease. Well, let's move on to the next step. Okay, so let's learn a little bit more about this machine. So it looks like these are what the pegs are and you are going to keep them pushed in on anything that is six inches or less, but then you can pull them out to disengage the punch. I wonder if I have this, this th uh, handle up, but if you pull them out, then it will disengage that particular punch. And that is what you're gonna do on the second time around. Let's, we're gonna do this all together because I found that a little bit confusing, but it looks like in the directions, they have all of the math done. So all we have to do is decide what type of book in terms of size we want to create, and then we'll refer to the directions to see on our second punch, which one of these we need to pull out to disengage. So let's go ahead. I think what I'll do is create just an eight and a half by 11. I'm just gonna use a sheet of paper and I will create just a fun little notebook and I'll just keep it pretty basic as we're trying out this machine. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and shut this. That way we can look at our directions and really see, but I'm gonna to refer to that first page again. I have all of my eight and a half by 11 sheets here and I am going to look at the 11 because that is going to be the height of my book. And that's where I'm going to want my binding. I'm gonna be wanting to put the binding along the height. Now, if you were going to do it along this side, then you would refer to the eight and a half. But again, I'm gonna do it this way. So I'm gonna look at 11 because that is my book size in inches. And so because it says 11, it says we're going to pull peg 10. And I believe it said we're only gonna do that on the second punch. So let me open this up. Okay, so this actually has to stay in. The guide has to stay all the way in for the first punch. So I'll grab three sheets of paper. Let me see if I can do multiple sheets here to save some time. Make sure they're all lined up. I'm gonna place them along that guide and then pull down my lever to punch. Okay, so then I have all my little punch lines right there. Okay, now it says to pull out the little guide. And then I think I'm going to align, I'm gonna have to show you this. There's a little guide right here. Do you see this little guide? And I think, oh, it looks like we can Put it up and down. I think that's where we're going to align our furthest hole that we just did. Okay, so I'm going to, or maybe just align any of them. This is all the way out. So would I align this hole, push it down, and then because I am doing 11 inches, it says to pull out number 10. Okay, so I have this number 10 pulled out and I have my little paper clamped in right there. Okay, kind of confusing really, but let's see if this works. And then with number 10 pulled out, let's go ahead and push that down. Okay, bring this back up and oh, okay. And what that did was it allowed the ends to be equal. Does that make sense? See, there's an equal distance from this last hole to the end of the page, and then this last hole to the end of the page. Okay, that was a tad confusing, so let me go ahead and do that again for you and myself. I'm gonna push that 10 back in. And again, where I got that 10 was from the front page because I'm punching 11 inches of paper, so then on that second punch, it wants us to pull peg number 10. Okay, and then again, Let's put this back in. Again, the pegs are numbered one through 12 right here. And you just pull and push, okay? 
All right, so let's do that again. So again, we start with our little ruler and our guide all the way pushed in. I did three at a time. Let's try, I don't know, it, it did really well. Let's try five. We can just keep ramping it up. It did really well. Mine's, this is punching, at least mine is punching really smooth. Okay, so I'm gonna place all of them in there. You just wanna make sure they're all aligned really well and punch down. Okay. Then I'm gonna pull this guide all the way out. Okay, bring this all the way here and then for mine, it has it lining up with the second hole. It's hard to see, but it has it, see how I have a couple holes there? I'm going to line that up and then it ends up being the second hole where we're gonna place that down into. Pull number 10 out and punch down. Okay, and there is our next series of sheets of paper. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep these all to the side and, oh my gosh, that looks really nice. <laughs> really nice, okay, let's go ahead and just continue. So, I'm not even gonna count paper at this point. I'm just gonna grab a stack. And you can just kind of be the best judgment on yours and how many you want to put through at one time. Okay. And push the number 10 back in. Okay, and just make sure this is all lined up. And let's punch down. Okay, pulling this all the way out. Lining this up. And I don't know that you even really need to push this button down, but it really does keep it in position. So why not, right? Okay, pull peg 10 out. And there we go. Push that back in before I forget. Release this. And there we go. Isn't that nice? I love it. Okay, I'll go ahead and continue the last few sheets. And then we will... Well, we'll worry about the little title page, or not worry about it, but we'll decide upon it. Okay, so I finished all of my paper. I'm just gonna make a small little notebook. I'll make it for my little one to have like a little drawing notebook. But there are my pages. Isn't that pretty? Now what I'll do is I'll find a piece of scrapbook paper for the front and, and the back. Let's do a nice little book. The front and back of my notebook, and we'll get this all assembled. Okay, so I have this really pretty paper pack from Hobby Lobby that I've had for a while now, and it has just beautiful, beautiful prints in it. So I thought we could use one of these for the front of the notebook. And my goodness, you can't go wrong. They're all so pretty. But maybe this, I think this would be really nice. So I'm gonna grab one again for the front and the back. to grab a bigger trimmer but let's go ahead and just trim this paper to eight and a half by eleven so we have eight and a half here and you can just decide which part of the print that you would like that looks good to me okay I'm saving every bit of that so there's our eight and a half by eleven Snug. There we go. And I'll just do the same for the back. Okay. There we go. Isn't that pretty? I've had this paper forever. And I'm always kind of a hoarder of paper. I never want to use it. I like to collect it and not use it because, I don't know, it's so pretty. <laughs> but isn't that just, it's a silly concept really to not use it. Okay, so now we need to get our cinch machine back out, keeping my scraps and we need to punch our little holes. Okay, and it leads me to wonder, where is all this paper going? It must have a little gathering tray. Oh, right here. Okay, so there is a little tray in the back. There we go, that's keeping all those little pieces. That is handy, because some punches, they just punch right onto the surface. They don't have a little tray, so I really like that. That's really nice. Oh, I, that was me, that was user error spilling that everywhere. Okay, so 
So same process because we're using the same size of paper. Okay, let's see which way we want this to go though. You wanna be mindful of which way you want your paper to go. I'm gonna do the cover. So I want it to be this way. I want to have my binding this way. So I'm just going to place that into my machine accordingly. Make sure all of my buttons are pressed in. Okay, I'll do number one, bring this out. Line this up, pinch it down, and then pull out 10. And double check that that's lined up nice. Punch it in. Okay. And there's our cover. Okay, now I think I can just do it the same way for the back. Let me see if this lines up. The holes should line up just perfectly, so I should be able to do it the same way. Yeah, okay, I was trying to decide if I wanted to put the back in, well, like upside down. I was trying to decide if I needed to do it this way for them to line up, but I think it's gonna line up just fine. Let's test it if we can just do it normally. So put this back in, all my knobs are in, and I want it to be, let's see, the back will be like this, so I want it to go this way. Okay, thinking out loud here, just for orientation. Push that down, bring this out. Lather, rinse, repeat. Push this down, pull this out, and punch. Okay. I have to admit, when I started looking at the directions, sorry for the noise, um, it looked intimidating, but it's not. And once you decide on what you want to create, then it's so easy. So now I have the back of my book and I have my pages and then the inside. So let's talk about what you could make with this. And I would love for you to add additional project ideas in the comment section so that we can be further inspired. But you could make obviously a notebook, a journal. Um, you could make your own scrapbooks or a little scrap page. You can make a travel notebook, which would be really interesting as well. A little photo album, but go ahead and list all of your ideas as well, because I'd love to hear, and I'm sure others would love to be further inspired as well. Okay, so I set, went ahead and separately purchased the little um, binding wires, and I got the three quarter inch binding wires, so we'll see how they work with this. I probably could use more paper, but for the purpose of this project, I'm just going to do that amount. But this came in a two pack, and I'll link everything that I'm using down below, but I'll go ahead and just pull out one of them. And now we're gonna move on to actually binding the book. So it looks like we actually will be maybe a little long here. So I'm sure the directions will help guide us on what to do if our binding is too long. Okay, so this is where we're gonna use the right side of the machine. And it's all coming back to me now, I think, because my mom actually had one of these I think at her office where she worked. Let's put that 10 back in. So it looks like you can only move the knobs when the lever is up or the handle's up, so that's good to know. But um, circling back, my mom had some kind of binding machine at her office, and it's kind of seeming familiar now, even though I think I was probably seven years old when I was playing around with hers and probably didn't know what I was doing. But I do remember this part from my memory that the binding will go on the right side. Okay, so there are two different sized ends. A little hard to see, but one side has some wider loops, and then the other side has um, loops that are, you know, a little bit more narrow. So we're going to take the wide side, see how these are wider, and we're gonna place them into the binding here, or no, I'm sorry, into the little area here. So one, Ooh, that's kind of tricky. 
Oh, no, it's not. I overthought it. I was trying to do it all at once or one at a time, but really it's all at once. Let me see if I can manage to do that again. Is that really as easy as it was? It really is just you set it there and then, yes, lay it down. It's hard to see with that little handle there, but there it is. Easy. Okay. So it does say to make sure there's a loop on every other peg. So we have a loop, an opening, a loop, an open, a loop, open, loop, open. So every other. I'm just scanning to make sure. Okay, that looks good. Okay, this is super interesting on the next part. So I am reading the directions as always. And it says that what we're going to do is we are going to hide the seam of our binding. So it says to hide the wire seam inside the back cover, first thread the inside pages, then the front cover, then the back cover. Okay, so our front and, front and back cover will be facing each other. So let's take our covers off. Front and let's find our back. Back. Okay, and it says first put the inside pages in. So I'm just going to place those in just like that. Okay, do you see how that is all looped in there? Okay. Then it says, then the front cover, so then we're going to put our front cover on, okay? Then our back cover, but our back cover will be facing our front cover. Does that make sense? So pretty side to pretty side. Front is on with all of our pages. Now our back is going to go on. Okay? Just like that. Okay, and what that's going to do is that when it closes, I suspect then since it's closing in this location, then it will, the back cover will hide that little seam, which is amazing. Okay, so that was all called the binding and now we're actually going to do cinching. So now we're going to adjust for the wire size and as we saw here, I got three quarter inch wires. And I see a little three quarter inch here. Let me see if I can lift this up so that you can see that. Ooh, without ruining everything. But there are numbers up there. You see where that little turn dial is? So that's where we're going to focus next. Now I'm going to make sure everything is still in place here. But now we are going to push and turn the knob to adjust the cinching bar. Push and turn. Oh, there we go. Okay, push and turn. And I'm guessing we're going to just go all the way to the three quarter. Okay, so I have it all the way to the three quarter. It's a little small on camera, but in person you'll see right there, three quarter. Okay, so then I think we're going to open this up and remove our paper from the side. So this is all ready to go because I think now we're going to turn this way and use this back part here. Okay, this is the cinch area. So this is going to um, go ahead and close the little wire binding. Okay, so it also is cautioning us not to put our fingers within that area, but I'm just going to kind of play around with there we go. Um, it's just the same lever as we did our punching in the front, but now we're going to close our binding in the back. And this number here that I set, I just referred to my packaging again. I'm at three quarters, and that's going to be the size of our um, little wire binding once it's closed. Okay, so I'm guessing what I do is just place this in like this. So I'm going to start with one little side here, place it in, and bend it down. Okay, and then you can see that it closed it. Isn't that neat? Okay, so there is, this is a better view, there it's all closed, and then here's our remaining open ones. So then I can just 
go ahead and place the other little portion in there that still needs closed. And you can see I'm doing this all with one hand and then the next section closed. Okay, now I think I need to get some wire snips just to trim off my extra portion there. Okay, and I have these little wire snips that I use for my metal dies when I am doing stamping. I'll see if I can just trim that off there. Oh, okay, there we go. And then you'll just wanna make sure that you don't have a sharp end. But then, here's our little binding here, and our little, um, this is where it was closed, that's called the seam. But since we placed our front cover, let's see, I think it was at this side, front and back cover in the order that we did, then once we close it, then it will go ahead and hide that so the outside of our notebook or whatever you're creating doesn't have that seam on it. It just is nice and closed just like that. Isn't that neat? So there is our final little notebook. And again, you can create a variety of sizes of little projects with this machine. It's so easy to use. One thing I was really, really um, noticing right off the bat is how easy it is to press up and down. And by the end, I was actually putting a fair amount of paper through there just because I'm impatient and I like to get things done a little bit quicker. Also, at the three quarter inch, you can see I could have put at least probably triple the paper in there. But for this project, this is just perfect. I love how that turned out. That's really fun. And I love how nice and professional that looks. This would be really awesome too for school projects. So if you have a kiddo that needs to get a project all bound and make it look all nice for the final presentation, this would be a fun little gadget to have as well. Okay, so honestly, I am really impressed with this. At the beginning, I thought that the instructions made it seem a little overwhelming, but as they always say, as you practice and as you actually do something, it really starts to make more sense. So don't get hung up on the instructions was my point there because sometimes the instructions just make you go cross-eyed in anything, right? But once you just pull out the project and pull out all of your materials, and start doing, it starts to really make sense. And don't be afraid to make a mistake too because you learn a lot in that portion of crafting as well. All right, don't forget to go down into the comment section. Let me know what you would do with this machine. I think this is really, really fun. I love this. If you have one, let me know what you've created with it. And I can't wait to continue playing around with this and creating more things. Be sure to give this a thumbs up if you enjoyed watching and I will see you the next time we do a new Tool Tuesday and we'll unbox something else brand new and have fun with it. All right, everyone, I'll see you all in the next video.